Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Danny Wisentowski. In the early 1970s, Joel Su Lee was falsely convicted of murder in San Francisco and ultimately sentenced to death. Activists, including a Korean American journalist, led to a pan Asian American movement to exonerate Lee. Lee's story is still a largely unknown piece of American history, but its resonance endures to this day. Lee's story is the subject of a recent documentary film, Free Chol Su Lee, which is screening one night only tonight in St. Louis at Webster University. The film delves into Chol Su Lee's fight for his freedom and the Asian American community's advocacy work to overturn his wrongful conviction. Well, I was not an angel on our side. At the same time, I was not the devil. In San Francisco, Chinatown, there have been a dozen unsolved murders. Yip Yi Tak was gunned down execution style. Shot from behind by a Chinese man in his early 20s. Chosu Lee had been involved in a gun going off in his hotel room two days earlier. That locked the police into Chosu Lee. Chosu arrested for a Chinatown murder. People knew that the Korean didn't do it. It didn't take a genius to find out what went wrong. Cho Su Lee is charged with murder. The jury found Lee guilty and sentenced him to die in the gas chamber. It's hard for me to comprehend that I am on death row for crimes I did not commit. Calling a Korean Chinese. The judicial system continues to remain ignorant and insensitive. You don't distinguish facial features of other racial groups. This case started in this kind of racism. For too long a time, the Asians been on the subject of racial injustice in the history of America. I think this is time Asian community came forth and said, enough is enough. We came across a newspaper article, and we both said, hey, it sounds like this man is innocent. That's really where the Chosu Lee movement started. The Chosu Lee movement had a life of its own. So many, many people were involved. We're continued and determined to fight. Everything hands in balance. This was a case of an injustice. We're all unified around a common goal, which is to free Cho Su Lee. It happened in America, but only in America we can right this wrong. That was the trailer for the documentary Free Chol Su Lee, which is having its St. Louis premiere tonight at Webster University. To talk about the film and the legacy of Chol Su Lee and the movement he inspired, we welcome Liz Lenevy. She is the secretary of the Gateway Korea Foundation Board uh, and on the board of its directors, and she is also an attorney at the Simon Law Firm in St. Louis. The Gateway Korea Foundation, along with the Very Asian Foundation, is co-hosting tonight's screening of Free Chol Su Lee. Liz, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Liz, who was Chol Su Lee? So we heard a bit uh, about his story from that trailer, but to just give a little bit more context, uh, Chol Su Lee was a Korean-American immigrant. He came to the United States uh, following the Korean War, um, immigrated here when he was very young, lived with his mother. Um, you see in the film he had some early run-ins with the law that actually ties into uh, his wrongful conviction later. Uh, I, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but um, as you could tell from the trailer itself, eventually he was uh, convicted of a Chinatown uh, gang leader's murder. And as, as again, from the trailer, we know that it was a wrongful conviction. He shouldn't have been there. There were several errors in our justice system that led to the police focusing on him, that led to his conviction. And eventually he found himself on death row. Um, his story inspired a journalist 
K.W. Lee to write about him, which then led to um, incredible advocacy, particularly by college students um, in California. And that eventually led to his exoneration. But as as we see in the film, um, he doesn't have a happy ending afterwards. And, and again, uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk more about that, but I don't want to give away too many spoilers. So, you know, look, just to rest on on that that community mm-hmm. activism, or and one that really became a nationwide uh, call for his freedom. Tell us a bit about that, and, and perhaps what that meant um, in that moment in, in American history at that time. So the the film focuses on and I, uh, the the Pan Asian. It wasn't just the Korean community. It was um, lots of different Asian communities coming together to right this wrong. And uh, it's it's incredible to see that solidarity, especially uh, as an Asian American, and I'm I'm Korean American myself. Um, but to see that uh, strength, and to see my community in in tangent with with other communities coming together um, to to fight an injustice, especially given the fact that stereotypically um, Asian people are are so often seen as as quiet or meek, and and you know just go along to get along. To see that type of fight. And that spirit and that sense of community, um, it, it's really inspiring. And it's something that I see even today. It resonates today, uh, especially in the last couple of years with Stop AAPI Hate uh, and, and the, the increase in hate crimes we've seen and how the Asian American community has band together to respond to that. Liz, one of the really distinctive parts of this documentary is that its its narrator Sebastian Yoon, um, he is he both narrates uh, the writings of Chol Su uh, himself, um, but Sebastian Yoon was himself also formerly incarcerated, mm-hmm. and and that gave this movie um, some really deep meaning for him. And let's just take a listen to what Sebastian Yoon was talking about in narrating this film with an interview with the Atlantic, uh, which happened just after the film's premiere at Sundance this year. I was always regretful of the fact that. I saw very little Asian Americans in the audience whenever I had conversations about social justice reform or criminal justice reform. And when Sue Kim, the producer of this film, reached out to me, it it excited me because um, I thought it was going to be an interesting um, opportunity uh, for Asian Americans to kind of put out a narrative that we also belong in conversations surrounding criminal justice reform. Liz, what do you hear in Sebastian Yoon's point here? It, it, does there need to be a greater emphasis and space on the Asian American place in this criminal justice reform conversation that is, is happening and ongoing in this country? Oh, absolutely. It affects our community, but it's something that I think culturally we don't want to talk about. It, it feels shameful. Um, and, and it's something that, again, going back to uh, the, the stereotype about Asian Americans that, you know, we're, we're quiet and we just go along to get along. Um, by now uh, trying to be involved in this conversation, having a greater presence in it, um, it's important not just to our community, but to other communities, too, which we need to, to have that solidarity. Um, and and I, I agree with him that I don't often see um, Asian Americans show up, but I think it, that the tide of that is turning. And that's apparent in the film and the fact that the film came out now. Um, I, I think that we see that Asian Americans are becoming more involved in all aspects of American life, and that includes criminal justice reform and our systems. And when this film premiered uh, earlier this year uh, at, at Sundance, that is, the co-director, Julie Ha, also spoke about what it meant to have another Asian American formerly incarcerated activist like Sebastian Yoon to be the voice of Chul Su in this documentary. And here's what Julie said also in an interview with The Atlantic. Digging into reading Chul Su's memoir and, and um, his looking at his interviews and then feeling like he could identify him in some way and then putting him in a position where he had to revisit trauma but was willing to do that um, in order to to, to serve Chul Su Lee and make sure that people could understand him and view him in an empathetic way. Um, for me, that just made me see um, our story in a different way and that, you know, that we could really center Chul Su Lee's voice and um, make sure, like, he had a chance to explain to um, all the people who supported him how hard it was um, to live a normal life and to live up to the expectations of the community, even though he actually, I think we, he wanted to, you know, I think he wanted to give them the fairy tale ending. And now the film with Sebastian's help to be able to explain how hard that is, um, 
I think that was really um, an important thing that we were able to do. That was Julie Ha, co-director of the documentary Free Chul Su Lee, who is speaking about the film, its subject, and having Sebastian Yoon, a formerly incarcerated activist, narrating the words of Chul Su Lee in this film. Liz, Julie's thoughts here, there is, there's a tension. She's talking about the challenges Chul Su Lee faced even after he released, but as she mentioned, it wasn't a fairy tale ending, and that doesn't make this story not one worth telling. But but tell us what was she referring to, and what are some of the more difficult parts of Chul Su Lee's life that that this film does get into. So what we see in the film is once the conviction is overturned, he's freed. Um, he is uh, sort of lauded in the Korean American community because so many people had um, you know wanted to support him and had wanted to see his freedom, and it was a it was a community effort, an incredible community effort. But the other aspect of that is we see how difficult it is for him to reintegrate into society, but also to carry that burden of having to. Um, not only deal with his own trauma, deal with his own struggle of losing so many years of his life and all of the, uh, like I said, the trauma that just must come with being in prison. Uh, But now he also is sort of under a microscope by his community. um, And to, to see how he deals with that stress, to see where his path takes him, it it is a difficult watch, but I think it's really important to to tell that story because oftentimes when we think of wrongful convictions, I feel like we stop at the moment where they walk out of the, the jail and they get to hug their family and everyone feels so great and everyone's happy, but then what's the story afterwards? And it's a really important conversation, not just in terms of wrongful conviction, but what are we doing for individuals who have um, served a prison sentence and now are coming back into society? How are we making sure that they are supported and they don't end up back in the cycle of um, you know the, the criminal justice system and back up in prison. Um, so I think it's an important story to tell. It's a difficult watch, uh, but it's it's deeply uh, moving and uh, very impactful. And I think it speaks the fact that uh, Julie and uh, Eugene, her co-director, um, the fact that they go so far into the story and tell the full story, I think just speaks to to them as uh, filmmakers. Liz, the screening is free to the public tonight, and it's going to include um, a, a very notable uh, a post-film discussion, which is going to include a number of experts, and that includes Wesley Bell, who is the prosecuting attorney in St. Louis County, um, also uh, for someone from the MacArthur Justice Center, but people who were involved um, both in the criminal justice system and in those reforms. What do you hope is that, you know, perhaps a St. Louis lens that, that people come to this film through, or how do you hope that it, it grounds this story that did take place in San Francisco, but one that does feel similar? similar and and reminds us of many of the cases we're seeing here in St. Louis and and Missouri. Yeah, so we have an incredible panel lined up, which the panel discussion will happen immediately after the film. As you mentioned, we're going to have St. Louis prosecuting attorney Wesley Bell. We'll also have Megan Crane, who uh, is the co-director of the MacArthur Justice Center, but she also helped launch the Missouri Wrongful Conviction Project. So she has an incredible perspective to bring. And we're also bringing in uh, journalists Sarah Fenske, as well as Aisha Sultan, um, who do quite a bit of work focusing on uh, the, the topics that are relevant in the film. And the reason that we brought these people is that even though this film took place in California 50 years ago, the issues are still happening today. And it still resonates today, and it's and it's across our country. And so what we wanted to do was bring in individuals both in, in law and in media to talk about um, the role that they play within this larger system, how we can fix the system, um, and specifically how that impacts our community right now and how that will impact our community going forward. Liz, in our last couple minutes, you you mentioned that this this time we're in now, um, with uh, sort of a, a rise in AAPI uh, discrimination in the last few years, mm-hmm. um, but also in cases that you know, like the one that helped found the Very Asian Foundation, which was a case where uh, Michelle Leon KSDK w- received this kind of very blunt racist message, but one that also I think evoked the sense of there are people out there who don't see Asian Americans as distinct. Um, ethnicities. They don't know a lot about them. They have a lot of presumptions. What does this moment feel like now? And and is this movie raising something that is, is actually really relevant about the moment we're in? So I, I think that this moment right now is incredibly powerful. We see so many uh, 
AAPI, especially AAPI youth, stepping in and stepping up to represent the community, to fight for our community, to fight for a better future, um, and and prove that uh, we our voices matter and that we're American and we are part of this American story, even if we have a different background. Um, that is something that is uh, particularly powerful for me because I did not see that when in my youth when I was growing up. Um, and, and so it's it's an incredible movement, and and we have so much to to gain from um, watching how these young people advocate, um, and also being able to work across uh, racial lines and advocate with uh, uh, fellow minorities um, in an effort to just really just improve everyone's life. I think that that's that's the goal of of this film, and that's the goal of this event tonight is to uh, bring a community together in order to make it better. Liz Lenevy is the secretary of the Gateway Korea Foundation Board of Directors and an attorney at Simon Law Firm in St. Louis. And there is a free screening tonight at 7 of Free Chol So Lee and a post-film discussion at Webster University's Winifred Moore Auditorium. Registration is, you can find that at gateway-korea.org slash film slash series. And again, that event is presented by the Gateway Korea Foundation and Very Asian Foundation. And we have a link to this information on our website at stlonair.show. Liz Lenevy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This segment was produced by Elaine Cha. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.